So hi and welcome to today's video. So today I'm going to be doing a detail of my car and it's sort of a spring clean kind of video so I'm going to be doing a full wash process as normal but I'm also going to be doing a full decontamination, some polishing and finally adding that paint protection and all the kind of finishing touches as well. So you can see what we're starting with here, the car isn't that dirty, I've been washing it weekly, sometimes every two weeks over winter to try and keep it sort of well maintained and make sure too many contaminants don't build up so there isn't a huge amount of dirt to kind of tackle at this stage but because it does need a, a full safe wash before we kind of crack on with the rest of the process so here you can see what I'm doing here just give it a rinse as I always do making use of my cartridge stubby gun which I absolutely love uh, if you've not seen a video about that and you're interested in purchasing one then I'll, I'll leave a link in the description so you can check out that review because if you don't have one already and you sort of um and hour in thinking you might get one then I would recommend it but obviously check that video out if you kind of want to hear more about it. So I decided to try this one today so the Car Chem Pre Soak Plus Snow Foam. So this is a pretty new one to have in the collection it's one that I picked up in the Car Chem Mystery Boxes I got a couple of those a little while ago now did an unboxing of those so this is one of the one of the best products I got in there to be honest. So it's a new snow foam, one I haven't tried. So you can see that it's actually quite a thick snow foam. And it is an alkaline snow foam, so it does have some decent cleaning ability. At some point, if you are interested, I'll do a sort of kind of comparison maybe between some of the other popular ones. I'm thinking Wax Planet 8 Below and maybe some of the built hamber ones just to see where this really kind of stacks up against that but I can see that the cleaning ability was doing what I needed to here. As I said the car wasn't totally dirty, it wasn't horrendous so something like this is, is pretty fine to be able to tackle that before I crack on with the contact wash. So I gave it a 10 minute dwell time, it wasn't an overly warm day and it did tend to hang about without drying so I thought I might as well just give it, give it as long as possible before I move on to the rest of the stages. You can see it does rinse off pretty easily, it takes a little bit more than sort of the built hamber snow foams which are a bit thinner, so it just takes a little bit more pressure washing off, but see it's doing a decent job and you can see the kind of hydrophobic behaviour of the protection I've got, so I do actually have Garage Therapy Sigma on kind of protecting it at the moment, so we'll talk a bit later on about how I kind of tackled that before I moved on with the polishing, is that something I kind of had to get rid of. So just moving on to the wheels now, so nothing particularly new here, I'm using Garage Therapy One Wheel Shampoo which is the best way of cleaning wheels that I've, that I've found, it's absolutely fantastic and I don't know what I'd do without it to be honest now. But first starting off by using that in an IK foamer, I'm using 15ml in 500ml of water there, so a reasonably concentrated mix, you could probably dial it back a little bit but I thought I'd treat myself and, and go for it here, but then I've got also in the bucket I've got 5ml of the shampoo and just tops up with water, not too precise about that. Just something to give a little bit of lubrication to the, the mitt that I use and also the brushes that I use throughout the process. So as normal here, I'm just kind of getting as much as I can off with one of these microfiber sort of noodle mitts, quite useful for these situations. Do get the bulk of it off to be honest. Then I've just got a hog's hair brush, pretty cheap one. I think I picked this one up from County Detailing to be honest. So I wasn't doing a full decon on the wheels today, I was just keeping them kind of well maintained and giving them a good clean. Main focus of today was really sort of on the paintwork. So the next part of the process was moving on to the wheel barrel. So for this I was using some brushes by SGCB. So this is a company that sells quite a lot of different equipment really and they sell these really really good quality sort of wheel woolly type brushes so I was using this one here now the only disadvantage of this one is that it is quite large so struggles to get kind of in between the spokes as much and get properly into the barrel but it does come in a set and it comes with this smaller one here which gets a lot more to the back of the wheel find it a lot easier so I sort of use them in combination really to get as much coverage as possible but also make sure I'm getting a thorough clean one of the main advantages of these is that they bend so it makes it really easy to get behind the spokes as well. I will be doing a sort of full review of these at some point. It's on the list of videos to make because I think they really are worth talking about. 
So once I've done the wheel barrel, what I moved on to next was the tyres. So for this, I used just a soft Phthalate Pro brush and also the wheel shampoo. So I didn't really need to strip it back because as you could sort of see from the water repellency before, quite a lot of that tyre serum I've been using on there. So I've got Garage Therapy tyre serum on at the moment and it's really quite an effective product and I'm sort of enjoying it more and more every time I use it. So I'm just keeping that maintained really rather than stripping anything off at this stage. And you can kind of see here that the tyres do really come up quite nicely. Of course if the tyres are more dirty I do sort of kind of strip it back a little bit more but coming into this time of year now it's just not really necessary at this point. So for the wheel arches what I did was just give them a little bit of a spritz with the Volit Pro Citrus mix that I have so that's a 1 to 6 ratio and I've just got a really really old noodle mitt that I use for the arches at the moment. It just gives them a very very thorough clean and I find it just gives them a little bit of a deeper clean than a brush. So here you can see actually I've zoomed in a little bit more onto the beading that the tyres are giving you at this point. Just really really excellent water behaviour that you can see from the tyre serum here. So whilst I was doing the wheels I also moved on to the exhaust tips as it's got a little bit of a pet hate for me when they look quite rusted and you see a really clean car and the exhaust tips just don't look great. So I'm just using a bit of a combo of the brushes that I have and also the mitt that I was using on the wheels just to make sure that they were clean and didn't kind of ruin the overall look of the car. So again, I'm just using that Garage Therapy one wheel shampoo. It's fine, it's pretty effective for this too. So after tackling all these areas, what I did was moved on to the contact wash. So here using Garage Therapy Decon Shampoo. So here you can see I'm using about 30ml in a round sort of 10 litre bucket, giving that a bit of a mix with the power washer. So the main reason for using this is of course, you start a decon process and one of the best ways to do it is to use this shampoo, it's really, really effective. It does help to remove sort of old wax and sealants. It just gives it a really, really deep clean and it helps with the rest of the process really. You can also see that it's really quite a lubricated shampoo and it has a really, really good level of suds. I do have a review of this shampoo and I'll leave a link for that in the description, but if you're after sort of a really good tool to have in your collection like this, any kind of decontamination, whether you're working on the tyres, the glass or the paintwork, find more and more uses for this all the time. And it's just a really, really effective product to have in the collection. So once I'd done all the panels and the paintwork, what I moved on to was the trim. So I'm just using a really, really soft brush by GB Detailing and spritzing it a little bit with that Valet Pro Citrus mix and also sort of popping it in the shampoo as well. I find that this is a really useful step if you are doing any sort of full kind of correction or decontamination and things like that. And you don't really want sort of bits in this in these kind of areas that are quite difficult to miss with just a mitt don't want these kind of flying into the pad when I'm polishing the vehicle so just spending a little bit of extra time making sure that these areas are properly cleaned and once I've done that what I did was just rinse the car down now you can see there's quite a lot of water behavior still here probably should have waited um, a few more weeks before doing this and sort of kill the water the sorry the sealant a little bit more but it was a decent weekend to do it and I didn't really want to miss an opportunity so I decided to pick this weekend to film it as it did take probably around 15 hours of filming for the entire process. I'd split it over a couple of days so I was aware it would take a while so I wanted to crack on. So here I am using a tar remover. So this is one by Squid Ink Detailing that I did a review of a little bit of while of that brand so I'll pop a link to those in the description but just going on, spraying it on and leaving it for 30 seconds and wiping it off with a microfiber towel that I don't care about. And afterwards I just went over it with Decon Shampoo to make sure that I've removed any kind of residue as I don't really want chemicals like that dwelling on the surface. So I also repeated this process on the exhaust tips. Like I said before, pet hate when they don't look good and they also really are kind of a magnet for tar spots. So this just gives it a little bit of an extra level of clean that I don't usually do. So 
So next stage was the iron fallout removal. So here I am using Built Hamber Corosol, which a lot of people have now. It's a really, really good product, quite cost effective. You get a litre of it, so I do really like this one. I've not got too much of it left now, so I thought it'd be a good one to kind of attempt to use up in this situation. Not the most exciting car to use it on because there isn't that much iron fallout to really tackle at all. And also it is a red car, so in terms of visually, you're not really getting much from this, but I didn't want to avoid kind of filming this step, I thought I'd show you. So I just use this on the lower panels, give it a rinse off after around sort of three minute dwell time. So then I moved on to the physical decontamination stage. So here I'm using Built Hamber Soft Clay and also Optimum No Rinse as a clay bar lubricant. So here I'm using Optimum No Rinse at a 1 in 16 concentration. I'm just using the clay bar here. So normally would you use decontamination shampoo or another shampoo that I just had left in the bucket. But this paint that I have on my car is so, so soft. You look at it and it swirls. So I'm aware that using a clay bar is going to inflict some kind of marring, but I just, just want to try this. I've heard good things about Optimum No Rinse as a clay bar lubricant. And I can say that it did do a better job than shampoos that I've tried in the past, although they are very well lubricated. Like I said, the paintwork is so soft, so just taking that extra care here, using a reasonably sort of concentrated mix of O&R to tackle this, I found it really, really effective and really does make the clay bar slip so much, so much more than I've noticed using other lubricants in the past. So I use a clay bar here, but I'm aware that using a clay mitt is might be a less aggressive option, which is useful for my car, um, because there isn't much decon decontamination that needs doing. So if anyone does have any recommendations for those, make sure you pop a comment down below. I definitely will check those out for next time I do this. Probably in at least a year's time before you'll need doing again though. So here you can see when I rinse it off, there's a lot of water behaviour here really really needed sort of addressing before I moved on to the polishing stage. So what I did now was applied decon shampoo and there was full 150ml of water and five sorry 50ml of the product in the lance and I just applied that over the entire car to just kind of help lift off that remaining paint protection that was still being quite stubborn. So applying it to the entire car like I said I gave it a three minute dwell time and then what I actually just did was went over the car with a fresh wash mitt, dipped in some decon shampoo again. And here, just the main reason to do that was just to agitate it slightly so that it would help to remove as much as possible. It's a relatively quick process to do, so I just wanted to kind of make sure I was giving it as much chance because sort of having to find a layer of paint protection when polishing takes a lot like, more time and isn't just really the most sort of effective way. If I can strip it off at this stage, I would much rather do that. So here you can see when I rinse it off what we're dealing with. So on the side panels, completely flat and no sort of beading that was really evident here and the sheeting was slow to non-existent. So I was confident at this stage that it had removed most, if not all of that paint protection that Signal was leaving behind. But on the bonnet, which was Gen generally tends to sort of cling onto it a little bit more. There was still a little bit of water repellent in. So you can see that here, there's just a little bit of beading that I wanted to get rid of, a little bit of sheeting still going on. So I applied decon shampoo again and repeated that process. I did it over the entire car just for good measure. I had enough in the lance. Um, but you can see here that the water behaviour is very, very flat at this stage. So I was confident to move on to the rest of the process. So once I'd given the car a dry off, it was time to get all my equipment ready for the polishing stage. So here I'm using Shaw Concepts S40, which is a finishing polish, G-Technic panel wipe, a Lake Country foam pad, and also a cheap Argos dual action polisher, which was about 45 quid and a pretty good purchase to be honest if you're just doing this quite occasionally like I am. So here you can just see me sort of dotting it on, spreading it over the panel and then working it in with a low speed before I've turned the speed up to around four before actually sort of working that in properly in the cross hatch pattern. So here really I'm not going for total perfection. My aim here is just to give a little bit of gloss. 
remove any marring that was left by the clay barn. There's a little bit to remove in certain areas. But just generally to kind of freshen up the panel to remove any of that paint protection that might still be left behind after this. So I've sort of skipped through it a little bit so you don't have to watch the entire process. I did use a little bit too large of an area to start with and I kind of toned it down a bit after this and worked on smaller areas as I found that I needed to to get the most out of the finish and polish in this situation. So once I'd worked it in, I just buffed off the residue using this new microfiber towel. So I like using new ones for these kind of situations that had been washed, but I do like using fresh ones. Same with the foam pads themselves. So that Lake Country one from County Detail, and I think I picked it up from. Um, I've also got a couple of others, the Chemical Guys one as well that I used too. Then to sort of inspect the panel, what I did was go over it with this G-Technic panel wipe. And I actually just had a torch to kind of really inspect the paintwork. The issue with this is I could see it, but you couldn't. So even when I pulled the camera in really close, it was hard to see. So I actually just left a section of the paintwork to do when it had gone dark, so you could see this process properly. So here you can see the kind of damage that was there at the start. Nothing too sort of significant, a few random deeper scratches that had kind of occurred from washing the dealer when I had it a while ago. And um, here you can kind of see afterwards, there was a little bit of reflection back as the outside light had just come on. So you can see that there is an improvement in the finish. So there, I was very happy with it. I just wanted to actually pop this clip in as well. And this was one that I took when I bought the car and you could just see here before I did that correction to get it to the stage we're at. Um, what this car looked like a couple of years ago, I just thought I'd show you all. You can see the kind of level of damage that the dealer had put in there, God knows what he'd actually washed this car with. Um, but here I'm just repeating this process around the entire car, working in quite small sections from now on. One thing I really wanted to talk about now was sort of polishing outside and I know that polishing outside isn't particularly recommended but I've not got a garage so it's not something that I can particularly avoid of course if you do have an indoor space to polish your car in then that's of course going to be the better option. So you know it's obvious not picking a day where it's going to rain you don't want to get halfway through the car if it's going to rain that would be a total nightmare. Quite an obvious one but wind is one that's also really important to consider. You want to pick the stillest day possible. No wind whatsoever is what you ideally want because any dust and debris flinging onto the car is essentially going to get grinded into the paintwork. I've got a tip of using optimum no rinse, so using a fairly dilute concentration, so 1 in 32 is about right. Just giving it a really, really sort of light mist and wiping it over before I do any panel. It doesn't leave a residue behind, so there's no issue with that. But what it does is, in the safest way possible, remove any dust before you actually start. Another thing to consider really is not putting any equipment in any sort of bad places. You, you want it as far away from the floor as possible. So using a bench or a table or something to consider, that's what I did. But also covering your equipment if you can. Um, even if you can cover it with a microfiber, but just not leaving your pads kind of out there. Changing your pads quite often using probably more microfiber towels than you have to indoors, just keeping everything fresh because you just don't want to get any dust and debris in there. It's pretty hard to work on the car outside because of the lighting, it's hard to inspect the paintwork. I'm not going perfect for perfection here, this is my daily driver, you know, it's my only car but it is a daily driver, it gets driven a lot. But if you've got a decent torch, even your iPhone torch can be actually quite useful, you've just got to spend longer than you would if you had, say, a halogen lamp. If you can invest in one, then go for it, but it's not something to massively consider. It really sort of depends on the level of correction you're going after at this stage. So once I had done all the polishing, I moved on to the waxing. So I'm using this one by Pyramid Car Care. So this is their Pyramid Car Care Ceramic Wax, and it's in collaboration with ODK. So this is probably the best wax I've ever used in terms of sort of all-round ability, really. So yeah, it's really, really easy to apply. It goes on like butter. It's also really, really easy to buff off, which is a massive, massive plus. Sort of a disadvantage of waxes sometimes, if they are a bit of a pain, then, you know, it really sort of puts me off using them and it's something that has put me off in the past. This wax in particular, being a ceramic wax, the water behaviour is just outstanding. 
I have got a video where I've demonstrated this and a few other of Pyramid Car Care's products so I'll leave a link to that in the description so you can check that out if you're interested but the water behaviour of this is just fantastic as well it's just a really really good all-round wax great levels of gloss can't fault it to be honest it is quite an expensive wax that's the only sort of drawback of it but you are getting a lot of features from it I've got a discount code which of course I'll leave info for that in the description if you are interested in picking up this wax and obviously it's going to take the price down a little bit it is a sort of treat yourself situation I'm very fortunate that Pyramid Carcad did send me this wax so making good use of it here and I'm going to sort of provide some updates on Instagram and I'm keeping this on the car just so you can see the water behaviour as, as we go along sort of throughout the next few months. So you can just see here really how effortlessly the, the product comes off, just such an easy one to use. Absolutely love working with it, it smells amazing as well. And Just a quick reminder, if you have made it this far through the video and you are enjoying it, it'd be brilliant if you could drop it a like, it really helps to support the channel and get the video out there to more people. So once I'd finished with the waxing, I decided to move on to the wheels and normally just use a spray and rinse sealant to apply a little bit of protection to the alloys, but here I thought, you know what, I've spent so long with the car already, might as well spend a little longer. So I applied Carriage Therapy Sigma as it's quite a popular one to use on alloys as it does provide some level of gloss. It's one of the best products in terms of adding gloss to the paintwork and obviously these are painted alloys so it definitely helps here too. But it's a really really nice one to use. Again, smells stunning. Um, absolutely fantastic. It's sort of products when you spray it on you think, I kind of want a little bit of a drink of that. Don't do it. Bad idea but it does smell a little bit like a cocktail. But it's just, yeah, really nice product to use. You just buff it on with one microfiber leave it for about a minute I found sort of most effective really sort of dependent on the temperature but a minute in these kind of conditions it's around 10 degrees and then buffed it off with a fresh microfiber it comes off dead easily no issues whatsoever with using this one so you can see the tires here are looking pretty good so this is after washing it with that garage therapy one wheel shampoo then just drying it off you can see the tyres actually do look really really good here from having that kind of remaining tyre serum from the previous application but of course wanted to apply it again to finish off the complete look so here you can just see what I'm doing I'm just applying it to a foam applicator pad you need very very little of this product so I can tell that this is going to last me a very long time I've been using it weekly for a couple of months now and yeah just it's doing a really good job you can also pop other products on top so when I've wanted to try other sort of dressings what I've done is put this underneath and then left it an hour and put another dressing on top just to kind of try them out but I do really like this finish of this one to be honest it's the favourite finish I've achieved so far it's not too glossy and distracting I find that it just really sort of completes the look of the car so once I'd moved on from the tyres, I just wanted to apply some protection and some darkening effect to some of the trim. So I have this G-Technic T1 tyre and trim dressing, which is one of the first ones I've ever bought and it, it, you need so little of this one as well that I've just been buying other products, so just not really got around to actually finishing using it. So I'm just trying to use up the remaining bits of it here. It does last a decent amount of time, dead easy to apply, just stick it on an old microfiber and work it in. It's not streaky, it's just sort of a fuss for you kind of products really. So once I'd actually applied this to all the trim, what I like to do is apply this to the wheel arches as well. As you can see they are pretty dark, but I definitely think they benefit from that little bit of protection. It helps keep them clean, but also just that darkening effect. I like that it kind of completes the look of the car. I don't want anyone's kind of eyes being drawn to this, this kind of area. So just applying a bit there finds useful. And then the final touch was to clean the glass. So I was using Optimum No Rinse and a Waffle Weave microfiber towel. So the Optimum No Rinse is at a one in 16 ratio. We find that it's really, really good because I've got coating on the glass, so I don't want to batter it with glass cleaners. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. What I'm going to do with now is just sort of leave you with the final shots of the car. 
if you have enjoyed it it'd be brilliant if you could give it a like comment down below if you've got any questions about the process or the products and subscribe for weekly detailing videos if you aren't already so thanks very much again and i'll see you next time